free university education and tax reform will be at the top of Bachelet's agenda once she takes office in March 2014. The popular leader has also pledged to improve health care, raise pensions and the minimum wage. But her $15 billion public spending plan comes just as Chile's economy is slowing. Bachelet has caused ripples in the region's strongest and most open economy by insisting that Chile needs a more visible state. Her opponents say her economic plans are driving away investment and will slow down growth. Dwindling demand for copper in the world's number one producer of the red metal, along with a slowdown in China, has some economists here worried. Bachelet's opponents say it's not the right time to raise corporate taxes or change the constitution, which was rewritten in the 80s to favor big business. More uncertainty means that there is going to be a less favorable climate for business and, and then uh, less investment and uh, probably less growth and less uh, increases in wages and, and jobs. But many defend Bachelet's move to increase state spending. I can give you a long list of Chilean business people who have clearly said this rise in taxes is perfectly possible and will not affect investment. Apart from copper, much of which is bound for China, Chile also has rich fish stocks and its wine is world-renowned. Bachelet says her proposed hike in corporate taxes, which could generate revenues for the state equal to around 3% of GDP, is a key part of her strategy to reduce Chile's huge income inequality. As Chile's economy has grown, so has its people's expectations. Dan, what's next now for Chile's economy? Well, Phil, the, the broad economic model won't change. It's the open free market economy, but the redistribution of the wealth of which the economy is generating will have to change. Uh, there's a, a popular demand here for, to, to reduce the income gap. And of the 34 countries in the OECD, Chile has the widest income gap between the rich and the poor. And to give you an idea, even though uh, wealth has increased quite, quite considerably in the last 20 years, the average wage is around $20,000 per year but around half the workforce earn less than $500 a month. So there is a huge chasm between rich and poor here. And although uh, they're d so de simply delivering healthy economic growth is not enough, uh, that's what Sebastian Piñera, the outgoing president of Chile, did. Uh, but he wasn't able to manage uh, the, the demands for a fairer society. Uh, and uh, we, as we've just seen, his political party was resoundingly defeated in the elections. And so uh, perhaps Michelle Bachelet and her coalition uh, have what it takes uh, to bring, make, make Chile a fairer society and redistribute its wealth better. Dan Collins, live San, uh, Santiago, thank you very much.